Obviously, uh, things can change, you know, for teams throughout the course of a season, but both you and, and a couple of your players have alluded to some of your biggest success uh, kind of occurred in that Texas game that went at home. What do you hope to potentially replicate or, or duplicate to achieve the same thing in Austin this weekend? Well, we, I felt like we set the tone defensively. Uh, we were the team that was aggressive. We were able to turn them over, uh, especially early. We dictated things with our defense. Um, and then I, I, as we built our confidence that way, um, you know, I thought we did a great job. Our ball toughness was terrific. Um, we had, I think, 22 assists, if memory serves me correctly. Tyrese was outstanding in commanding the game. So for us, defensively it's dictating it's physicality it's pressure in the ball offensively it's it's like commanding the possessions and the toughness we had I thought our guys were especially resilient that game we were uh we felt like you know we had uh really needed to have that win and our guys did a great job of being intentional with that that focus and toughness throughout and uh you know and then again we we shot the ball well I you know from three as well so all those things are factors. Thank you. Our next question will be from Randy Peterson. Randy, unmute yourself and go ahead. Good morning, TJ. Um, the bottom half of the, the bottom half, the second half of the, of the, the conference standings, there's four of you at, th at three and six and West Virginia's at two and six. And we all know that that's, they're better than that, or they will be better than that. What do you make of 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 the conference? Maybe four through four through ten. Well, I think even at this point, you know, there's certainly teams that you play, um, you know, in, in this league that you realize are as good as anybody in the country. But what you also realize is that everybody's good, and then like. I don't know how to even quantify who four through 10 is, because if you look at conference schedule, I think at this point, looking at it, like us in West Virginia have probably had as challenging as a first half of the league schedule as anybody based on what the metrics say, even though I'm well aware of how hard every single game is. Um, so to look at the puzzle halfway through, you know, like you're comparing, you know, not, congruent things right because some some have played some teams there's two teams we haven't played once and there's two teams we've already played twice so I just say like the league is really strong top to bottom and that's evident because when you watch every single night the games come down to the final couple minutes it's a team that you would you know like you know somebody thinks should win versus another team and then it's the game goes differently you're seeing teams win on the road so i'd say specifically answering your question four to ten like everybody's really good everybody's physical everybody's defensive minded and um it's really going to be about the teams that can stay together uh continue to play for each other and uh as as you go along you know in conference play because it's it's every night is a challenge thank you tj Thank you. All right, next up will be Travis Hines. Travis, unmute yourself and go ahead. Hey, TJ, how are you? Good, how are you? I'm good, thanks. What would you say has been your guys' biggest stressor defensively through conference play so far? Um, what we're emphasizing the most or what's hurt us the most? And what's, what's hurt you or what's been the biggest challenge for you guys defensively? Yeah, I think people are trying to spread us out more. We, we do a, a really good job of guarding um, and keeping the ball in the outer third of the court. Like, I don't know what the numbers say today, but I know our defense is still, you know, whether it's top six or top seven in the entire country based on, you know, us really being able to turn people over. So what happens is because we turn people over at, at such a high rate, they try to space us out more. Um, to put us in positions where, you know, maybe it's harder to do that. Now, Kansas did a terrific job of spacing us. And at the same time, we still turned them over 22 times. So it's kind of like we have a defense that's very disruptive. 
And so in that we're, we're taking some more risks probably and trying to generate turnovers. Um, so what we're seeing more and more is people popping their five man to the middle of the court, right? Like they did with uh, McCormick. And certainly when he's making that 15, the 17 foot shot on the top of the floor, that puts some stress on us. Um, so I think more than anything, it's people playing their five man away from the basket and, you know, we saw it, Oklahoma did it with Groves. We saw McCormick doing it the other night and playing him at the top of the floor and having him facilitate offense. Now, people have tried to do that as well, and we've generated a lot of turnovers because you're taking the ball out of somebody's primary playmaker's hands and, and forcing, like, a big or a center to, to make those decisions. But I think at times it's played to our advantage, and at times – it's provided, you know, it's created challenges, but that's what we're seeing more and more of people trying to spread us out and space us uh, on the perimeter. You know, obviously you guys have been excellent elite at creating turnover. So that's nothing you're going to change, but do you, does, I guess, either taking the risk you alluded to or just pressuring the ball, does that make you give up things elsewhere? Or do you feel like they're kind of, when it comes to that spacing or getting spread out they're they're independent variables of each other? Yeah, I'd say more towards independent variable just because, like, for our group, based on our strengths, uh, we need to dictate defensively. We're not a team that can sit back and play a drop coverage or positional. Um, we don't have, you know, like some teams have a seven foot one guy that can just protect the rim and stay at the rim. Um, we don't necessarily have that type of guy. And so because of the length, um, you know, we're not as long and tall or as big from a mass standpoint as a lot of the team's front lines are. So we need to dictate by flying around, giving extra effort uh, and, and getting deflections and all that, that stuff. Like, you know, do we occasionally give up a back cut because of it? Sure. Probably, but at the same time, we probably turned somebody over once or twice trying to make the same play that maybe they converted once. So you're going to look at, you know, giving um, at times, you know, giving that up, but I I'd say overall, like we have, we have to do things one way for us to be successful. And if we don't do them that way, there's not a good alternative. So even though there's such a thing as like, you know, secondary coverages and those things, we've seen our group, when we execute what we do well, we feel good about the outcomes. Were you confident that the the level at which you turned teams over in the non-conference would translate to, to league play, or has this outperformed your expectations, you know, from a month ago when you guys started? Yeah, I'd say it's a credit to our guys because we've been able to still dictate defensively even when shots aren't falling, our offense isn't going as well, which is a credit to their character. A lot of times when guys aren't scoring uh, at the level they'd like, maybe the defense slips and that hasn't been the case. I also think teams in our league a lot of times want to play taller, bigger guards that maybe aren't as natural as a point guard, but it helps their defense, obviously – you know, Texas Tech stands out that way with the guys they play at the point who are 6'5", six, 6'6", six, six, and they're doing it as much to help their defense uh, to have that size and length and physicality. So I think it is a credit to our guys how hard they're playing and how hard they're working. And I also think that some of the teams in our league, you know, choose to play not as much of a conventional point guard because – they want to have more size and length and physicality on the floor for their defense. Thanks, TJ. Thank you. James Powell, go ahead and unmute yourself and ask away. Uh, <clears throat> sorry. Hi, TJ. Um, I was just curious as if as to if there was a specific reason why um, Tristan and Aruna played eight minutes against Kansas. Was that just how the game was playing out, or is there a specific reason behind that? Well, with Tristan, you know, in particular, I think we we all can see like when his production, when he's had that instant impact on in our team, right? And so he's had a lot of those games where he starts off with a big dunk or a big rebound or those type of plays. And when he does that, his minutes are increased. Um, and so 
overall, like I think for all of our guys, playing time uh, is going to be tied to, you know, how are you helping our defense first and foremost? Are you guarding the dribble? Are you, um, you know, are you doing a good job being physical, guarding the dribble, keeping the ball in front of you? Are you doing a great job on the glass, uh, commanding rebounds and protecting the rim, specifically if you're Tristan, because we've seen him do a great job of that. So if his minutes aren't as high, I'd say the reason would be that we feel, you know, he's getting beat off the dribble. Uh, we're not getting the rebounds. We're not getting the rim protection. And when his minutes are higher, those things are standing out for our team. And we're, you know, we've seen where they can be really good. So just like everybody, especially on our front line, um, the minutes are tied to doing the physical things. And that for him specifically involves guard the dribble, you know, get the rebounds and protect the rim. Andy, unmute yourself and go ahead. TJ, what's the challenge for you guys playing um, road games, two road games in four days, whatever it is. And one of them obviously includes um, West Virginia. What's the challenges for you guys? Yeah. I mean, shoot, the challenge is, um, you know, that those teams are both really good at home and they don't lose many home games. And, they're both physical. Uh, the style of play that we employ um, is one that's physical and aggressive, and so are they. And now they're on their home court. And, um, you know, so that, I mean, that's really the challenge is that they're both, you know, again, with West Virginia, they're better than what they've been in the league right now. And I think they're, they've got an urgency and a desperation to how they're playing. I mean, they just went to Baylor and, you know, Baylor kind of snuck out. <laughs> Um, with the win late and then I'd say with Texas like obviously we beat them here I don't look at all the numbers but I guess we've scored about as many points against them as anybody has so I'm sure there's a you know going to be a stubbornness to them to not want us to get our offense going again and so both games are going to be really tough I think it's tough anytime this league when you go back to back games on the road for sure um but especially when, you know, both teams are coming in with a, a urgency after Texas just losing, you know, the game on the road that they did. And West Virginia, you know, by the time we get to that game next week, um, what the challenges they've had. So they, they really want to win, and we really need to win as well. Do you stay out or do you come back, whatever, Saturday night? Yeah, we come back Saturday after our game to get get home with, especially with the early game at one. Uh, we'll we'll come back right after the game. Okay, I'm done. Thank you. Thank you. All right, and we'll finish with Rob Gray. Rob, unmute yourself and go ahead. Morning, TJ. Um, wanted to ask what guy is there a guy on your team that is kind of the uh, I don't know. I want to say DeAndre Kane or the. George Yang, the vocal leader, or did you assemble a team of what you thought were kind of like collective leaders? Uh, uh, how, how has that shaped up for you? Yeah, I, I'd say as a group, it's more the collective leaders. Um, you know, in recruiting, you try to identify those guys that have that engaging personality. And, you know, I think a lot of times as coaches, you know, we all talk about leadership and how you want vocal leaders, but like um, every team doesn't necessarily have like a guy who does that based on my experience. And for some teams, it's more challenging than others. So I feel we're fortunate uh, to have a lot of voices on our coaching staff that do a great job at leadership. I think as far as our team is concerned, that's something that, you know, is, is by committee and different guys at different times, depending on what we need. Um, you know, when you talk about a guy like George Niang, who's obviously really special to me, like part of that leadership is based on his investment in this program over time. And that got better and picked up more momentum sure. as the years and the wins and the investment in Iowa State got greater. So, um, you know, you hope in recruiting, you identify those guys. You also want to develop a guy like Tyrese Hunter, who is an uh, impactful player as a freshman, so that he develops that same program pride that a guy like George did. And as he's developing it, that you see more and more of those examples as he moves forward in his career as well. 
Got you. Thanks, CJ. Thank you. All right. Thanks for your time today, Coach. Thank you.